Welcome back to our Injustice 2 guide series. All 10 of you. This time we're going to be talking about Red Hood, and yes, our goal is to redeem ourselves to Mr. Dan Johnson. Such a tough critic. Hopefully this time around our information is worth your time. My name is Desmond, and you're going to be hearing a lot from me over the next 20 minutes. <laughs> Red Hood's forced offense is somewhat interesting, as in he shouldn't have it, but the bombs give him a small window to make your opponent go on the defense. Nobody wants a bomb on their feet, so naturally your opponent is going to try and avoid it. The reason why this kind of works is because knowing your opponent's train of thought is an advantage. And in this case, your opponent will most likely have an avoidance mindset. So the odds of your opponent attempting to control space is highly unlikely in this moment, thus allowing you to gain some ground and apply pressure with relative safety. Sort of. Hey, I know it's not an atrocitous cat, but it's better than nothing. If for some reason your opponent is content blocking bombs, well, give them some Gotham Stars too and you'll have full meter in no time. Red Hood is annoying to deal with up close because the only way to deal with his bomb pressure is with a hard read. And even then, it could just amount to a beneficial trade in your favor. 3-2 is ambiguous and advantage on block if you choose to finish it. Lacking good overhead low string variations keep him from getting a full 5 notches. And no, his bombs don't provide a legit 50-50 mix-up since your opponent has several options outside of armor to escape or completely punish your bomb attempt. Pressure, yes. 50-50, no. Red Hood's mid-range is slightly weaker in terms of bomb pressure, but his back 3 makes up for it, giving him yet another above average rating. And you've guessed it, because of those bombs. Bombs, bombs, bombs. Just fucking throw them everywhere. Go ahead. He's capable of fighting in the long range with his gunshots and Gotham Stars alone. However, the added benefit of the bombs makes your opponent want to move, thus giving up their position. And if they're moving, they're not throwing stuff at you. His anti-air game is above average, thanks to Down 2 having a generous vertical hitbox that leads to his meta. Red Hood can score big damage with alternate anti-air attacks, such as Back 1 or Upward Gotham Stars. Wake-up situations is about as polarizing as you can get. Fatal Drop is a great defensive wake-up in open space that's extremely difficult to punish. In the corner is a different story. You must meter burn Fatal Drop for an attempt at safety, and if blocked, you're easily full combo punishable. On a side note, while Lethal Lunge doesn't have invulnerable wake-up frames, it is very quick and can be used with success if your opponent doesn't have a meaty setup for you. Red Hood has an okay forward dash and a less than okay back dash, but that's fine because his Fatal Drop is a much better retreating option. Lethal Lunge is also useful for long-range forward mobility at times. His normals are kinda shitty for whiff punishing because the range isn't great and they're difficult to hit confirm. Fishing with back 3 is decent because it has great range, and it can go under all kinds of attacks. However, it's negative 4 on block, and considering how crappy his backdash is, cancelling it isn't always safe. As for reversals, Lethal Lunge is great for punishing blocked attacks because it's an 8 frame startup and advances forwards quickly. Definitely a top tier reversal that averages out his punishment department. Without a doubt, Red Hood's bombs are integral to all aspects of his game. You can control the distance by holding a direction after the input. Meter burning the bomb makes it explode immediately upon landing, allowing for a nice juggle. And for ground combos, you're going to need to use the close bomb when you meter burn it because it's a few frames faster, which makes all the difference. The beauty of the bomb is that as soon as it leaves your hand, it will land, and it will detonate, regardless if your opponent hits you or not. Seeing as it does roughly 10% on hit, your opponent does not want to be trading hits with you. Next up we have the Lunge, and this is a great attack. It's an 8-frame startup that covers a decent amount of distance. Full combo punishable on block, however that's not a big deal because you shouldn't be using this in the neutral without a bomb on the screen. Meter burning this at long range adds 2 gunshots that don't mean a whole lot. And meter burning it at close range adds 3 overhead gunshots making it safe on block. However, sometimes there's a gap, and if your opponent is mashing an armored attack, they might get you. Gotham Stars are your generic projectile which can be thrown upward by inputting down back 2. Meter burning causes Red Hood to throw a bunch of stars over a longer period of time which do good damage, but isn't too conventional in a projectile fight because getting hit in the middle of your meter burn lacks the buenos. Meter burning your upward stars has some usages for anti-air and corner combo purposes, but as a whole you don't really want to be meter burning stars unless you know it'll pay off. Fatal Drop is your replacement for the subpar backdash. Meter burning this adds gunshots and some pushback for extra safety. This move is also your designated and vulnerable wake-up that'll get you out of practically all wake-up pressure in open space. But the corner is another story. You have to meter burn this if you're in the corner to have any chance of getting up unharmed. And if your opponent is waiting for it, you will be full combo. So yeah, Fatal Drop is extremely useful in open space, and really not extremely useful in the corner. Red Hood's parries counter all grounded physical attacks. Generally speaking, you'll parry all grounded normals and non-magic slash weapon specials. With that being said, I will leave you with this.
The air gun shots are overhead attacks that have decent range. Meter burning this adds additional shots. On its own, it's not very useful, but it does do a lot of block damage, roughly 9%. It is punishable on block with advancing specials, so beware. Red Hood's trade is a stance that leads to either a gunshot or an attack string. The gunshot is exactly what you'd expect it to be. Nothing special to say here. If blocked at close range, it's punishable by long-reaching specials, or if your opponent has long-reaching normals, you'll eat a full combo. But who cares, right? It's not like you're ever going to be using this at close range anyways. The attack string is a bit more interesting. You have a low ender that knocks down and is full combo punishable on block if your opponent has good timing with their normals. The overhead ender knocks down on hit, and only fast supers and a few specials can punish it on block. The grab ender gives you the most meterless damage and has to be crouched to be avoided. It's full combo punishable if crouched, but it's not uncommon for your opponent to screw up the punish if they have input shortcuts enabled. You can also meter burn the grab for a free jump in, seeing as your opponent is in that weird NRS stun where they can't do anything other than block for 45 frames or so. The last ender is a meter burn which does an auto combo that grants you the most damage and is safe on block. So which ones should you use? I personally don't use this outside of a combo, however if I were to use this as a mix, I'd use the overhead 50% of the time because it's the safest. 40% for the grab and 10% for the low gunshot because the grab gives the most damage, however the different timing required for the gunshot is nice to keep your opponent on their toes. I don't think it's worth using meter because the extra 1-2% damage you get isn't really worth it. You can get way more in block damage with other methods using one bar. I would never meter in the grab either because there are alternate combos that put your opponent at a huge disadvantage without wasting meter. Finally, you can choose to cancel your trait by pushing 1. A Red Hood player needs to always be doing something to make it more difficult for the opponent to place a well-timed jump or some advancement. So if you're not sure or you're just trying to bait your opponent to jump, this is your move. First, a general overview of what attacks to be thinking about and their respective zones. At long range, you have your choice between Gotham Stars and your trait Gunshot. You can use them however you like because they both do the same thing, more or less. Gotham Stars being a special gives you meter just for using it whether it impacts or not, while the Gunshot only gives you meter on impact. I should point out that a blocked Gunshot gives the same meter as impacted Gotham Stars. Gotham Stars also do more damage, however it's easier to defend against since they're visible. Unlike the Gunshot, which is invisible and travels faster. Personally, I like to use the Stars first, then use the Gunshot after to mix up the timing. But either way, do be random about your projectile usage. Bombs are the foundation to Red Hood's gameplay, and the long-range neutral is no exception. Your strategy here with the bombs is pretty simple. Toss them at your opponent's feet, and see what happens. If your opponent plays it safe and decides to block it, then toss some stars after the bomb. Your opponent has a higher hitbox when actively blocking during a crouch, which means they'll be forced to block your high stars. The timing is easy in the long-range neutral. Just toss some stars immediately after the bomb for the easiest half-bar of meter you'll ever make. If your opponent is a feisty long-range warrior, you'll have to be more careful with your bomb usage but only a little bit because most of the cast doesn't want to trade hits with you. Just remember to have a healthy mix of conventional projectiles and your bombs. If your opponent is the type to try and avoid the bombs either by dashing or jumping, try to snipe them with your stars. Something of note, it's not worth meter burning your bombs because if it hits, the only thing you can combo is a projectile, which ends up doing less damage than a normal bomb due to the reduced damage. A normal bomb does around 9%, while the meter burn bomb does around 3%. It's doubtful that you'll be able to kill off your opponent in the long range alone, so it's best to build as much meter as possible with blocked stars and bombs so you can put that meter to good use in the mid and close range. Any damage you cause to your opponent in the long range is a bonus, just make sure you build some valuable meter and definitely don't waste it on long range bombs or stars. Nope, we're not done talking about bombs yet. Welcome to the mid range bomb meta. Offensively speaking, you still want to toss a bomb at your opponent's feet, however, instead of following up with stars, just lunge at them. Normally trying to jump somebody out in the open like this is a bad idea. But since the bomb will impact after your lunge, it makes it totally safe on block, and you just scored about half a bar of meter on block too. Your opponent is not going to be okay with this, but there's not a lot anybody can do about it without a hard reach. If your opponent happens to jump, it's not a big deal because you'll sail right on underneath them. The lunge range is roughly the default bomb distance, however if you're ambitious with the range, you can push your opponent into a far bomb for some randomness. Defensively speaking, if you drop a bomb at your feet, it'll protect you from almost all advancing attacks and jump-ins. The logic behind a defensive bomb is to discourage your opponent from making any advancement on you. 
thus giving you more control, which is always ideal. When your opponent feels like they don't have any options, they're more likely to do something risky, like jump at you. After you show them it's not a good idea to force their way in, just safely make them block your specials and build meter. With meter, you can deploy some tricky block situations to your opponent and score some easy damage. I'll get into these situations later in the video. Most opponents will not be able to hang with Red Hood in the Patience game, so take advantage of it and lame your opponent out. Okay, okay, let's take a break from the bombs and focus on other things, like whiff punishing with back three. Red Hood's back three has a long range and can tech crouch all kinds of attacks. Obviously, you can get a full combo on hit, but it's negative on block coming in at negative four, so be wary about attacking on block. Using the universal back three meter burn counter strategy works, of course, so if you have meter, your opponent may not opt to attack you on block. Personally, I don't take risks with back three unless I have the meter, but it largely varies on how aggressive my opponent is. While it is okay to fish with back three, you'll want to keep the bomb strategy dominant. If I had to give a recommended usage number on back three, I'd say about 25% of the time, mainly because of how shitty the recovery is from his backdash and that it's negative on block. Red Hood's longest reaching normal is back 2-3, which starts off low in mini launches that can be comboed in the corner. Back 3 is the superior whiff punish, however, if your reactions are excellent, then you can whiff punish with back 2, cancel it into a meter burn bomb for a combo. Back 2 cannot be hit confirmed, and only has a single follow up that you can't full combo off of in open space. In general, I prefer not to use back 2 too much because I believe that Red Hood is strongest when applying pressure with constant ambiguous offense. Only use back 2 as a reactionary whiff punish. Back 3 is your anticipatory whiff punch. Is that even a word? Anticipatory? That sounds weird. Forward 2-3-1 is a good string because it advances forward and hits overhead then ends low. Safe on block too. Well, Supergirl can get you, but that's it. You don't want to finish it however. It's best to cancel into something, whether it's a bomb for pressure or your trait for low risk damage. Forward 2-3 is hit confirmable, but it's tough. The ideal usage of this attack is to try and hit confirm with a bomb. Meter burn it on hit for a combo, don't if blocked. If your opponent starts to attack after the first two hits, then cancel into your trade instead. 3-2-3 three, three is the best attack string to use up close because the initial hit is mid, it's hard for your opponent to tell if you're going to finish it or not, and it's plus 2 on block. The same logic from forward 2-3 carries over, but there's one catch. If your opponent has an 8 frame special, it'll trade with you if you go into your trade on block. By extension, you can also get interrupted by counter specials. Don't worry about meter burn back 3 though, that gets shut down. I personally would always side with 3-2, unless I need the extra range of forward 2-3. And finally, there's down 1. There's nothing special about it, but if you're pelvic grindingly close to somebody for whatever reason, break it up with a down 1 or 2.
So you have some meter, but your opponent has a pretty solid defense preventing combos, huh? You can create some really difficult to block situations with meter. Dropping a bomb before using a meter burn lunge is really difficult to block since the bomb will detonate during your overhead gunshots. If your opponent manages to block everything, you're safe from all normals and specials, and you scored about 9% block damage. If you want to change up the timing, you can do Red Hood's air gunshots for a similar result, which gives you 11% in block damage instead. However, characters with fast specials can punish you on block, but don't expect people to block this with any consistency. Red Hood's less useful meter burns can actually be of good use in specific environmental situations. First up, we have 4332 grab meter burn. If Red Hood was a 50-50 character, then that would be great but he's not, thus making it highly questionable in most cases. Well, that seemingly useless meter burn grab is dirty when paired up with unblockable interactables. For the spacing, you'd want to be roughly the default starting distance from the interactable when you begin your trait combo. If you're off target, you can dash forward, then use forward 2-3 to push your opponent into position. This is extremely difficult for your opponent to get out of. In most cases, only armored attacks can escape. Corner unblockable explosions are much easier to position, seeing as you just need to combo your opponent in the corner. But not all of these interactables are the same, despite appearances. You can't combo off the bench in the front gates of Arkham Asylum, Brother Eye, or in the Red Sun prison room. You can only combo Gorilla Grodd in the Atlantis Nursery in Joker's Playground. Everyone gets boned at the Batcave Armory, Slaughter Swamp, and in front of the Empire Theater. Despite being a different type of interactable, the barrels on the right corner of Joker's Playground work too because they're unblockable. The timing is a lot tighter and will require quite a bit of practice, however, you should still go for it because if it lands... Yeah, that's why. You know those consoles on the bridge stage that tick down to an explosion? Well, Red Hood has a pretty nasty setup that not many characters can get out of. If you nail somebody with it going towards the corner, immediately use Meter Burn Gotham Stars to keep them in place for a tough trap. Since you can't buffer shit after the impact, a possible escape will depend on your timing with the Gotham Stars. Even with the lack of buffering, it's still hell to escape from and is largely based on luck. Tech rolling to a wake up teleport seems to get away from this setup consistently. Everything else requires luck and some bad timing on your part. Hitting somebody with the console going towards the center is a bit more complicated, but still effective once mastered. Since you don't have the corner to restrict the distance, you're going to have to replace Gotham Stars with a backdash. By doing this, your opponent can't avoid the console explosion by retreating. They must avoid it by advancing towards you, which obviously that's not everyone's first instinct. Of course, if your opponent knows they have to avoid the explosion by advancing forwards, a meter burn fatal drop is most likely your answer. I know this tech is difficult to do, but it's definitely worth it seeing as you can get over half your opponent's health with a proper combo to the console setup. After combos, Red Hood definitely loses the momentum, which is typically what happens to most characters. But that doesn't have to happen if you're willing to sacrifice 7-10% to damage. If you use forward 2-3 bomb as your juggle, you can create a wake-up situation that's almost foolproof. Your aggressive post-juggle follow-up is an immediate back 2. The cautious follow-up is to forward dash and crouch guard till after the impact, which at that point you'll have advantage after the bomb explosion. The great thing about this strategy is that it covers every wake-up option and very few can actually do anything about it. So let's take a deeper look into this. We'll use Deadshot because everyone hates him, and because he has a good wake-up. Can Deadshot backdash to freedom? No. Tech roll backdash? Nope. By the way, if you really want to send a message to those backdashers, use a quick dash and then a back three. How about waking up with a special or normals? Nope. Tech roll into a special or normal? N no. Super? Uh, nope. Tech roll super? If you're dealing with a slow super, as in 24 frames slow, then nope. What about Deadshot's annoying and vulnerable wake-up, the assassin knee? It's not fast enough to punish your whiff back too, so no, it does not beat this setup. But a tech roll assassin knee does. So what now? 
Well, you could take the cautious approach and replace back two with a dash, but then you have to deal with a possible meter burn. Unacceptable. Replace back two with a jumping three. The timing is to attack at the peak of your jump. It doesn't really matter if your opponent went for something else, they have to respect your jump. Please note that this jump in is a character specific follow up. Any character with a grounded advancing special will get away from you. Dr. Fate, for example, trades with the jump. However, you can just dash up and use a well timed down one or standing one to snuff his invulnerable wake up. Generally, this is a bad idea, but since Dr. Fate doesn't have any fast specials, you can get away with this. Green Lantern is similar, but since he doesn't move backwards with his invulnerable wake up, you can just walk forward slightly before using your back two to stop him. There are a few that you have to respect some that you don't, and some that you just need to alter to deal with their invulnerable wake up. Oh, and if they delayed their wake up, no big deal since that prevents them from doing an invulnerable wake up. You'll recover from your whiffed attack and simply attack them when they do get up. This tech does work in the corner too, but you have to change your juggle to back one forward two three close bomb. The reason being is because the close bomb is four frames faster than the other bombs, so you add an additional hit to make your opponent fall a bit faster. Personally, that's too much for me to remember in an actual match, so I just juggle with back one, three, two, three. Three, two, three creates a hard knockdown if juggled and sets up the perfect timing for a jumping three. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope it was helpful to all the Red Hood fans out there. If you didn't like the video, I don't read comments. I can't read at all. Robin is next on the list. After him, we're not sure. I say Shoulder Woman, the other guy likes Brain Hat and all them hentai tentacles, but most likely it'll be Firehead if we can't agree. Till next time.